This is huge. For the first time, they're using that dreaded word breach, meaning uncontrolled release of radiation into the environment. And remember that Unit 3, which is suspected to have the breach, contains plutonium. Plutonium is the most toxic chemical known to science. A speck of plutonium, a millionth of a gram, could cause cancer if it's ingested. And so this has to be looked at very carefully because if there is a full abandonment of the reactor site, if they abandon ship, we could be in free fall. We all remember back to March. Japan being rocked by a magnitude 9 earthquake. Then as the story developed, the world watched on in horror as massive tsunami waves pounded the northeastern coast causing terrible loss of life. The same tsunami waves that wrecked large areas and killed thousands also severely damaged the Fukushima nuclear plant. I watched in horror as the news broadcast shocking pictures of the explosions at the plant. Here we are going to have a look at this modern nightmare. We start off with a BBC clip. Here we see Professor Chris Busby telling the truth, right from the start. The other, a Paige Schill who has a pension from the nuclear industry is giving the nuclear industry's line. Listen carefully to what he has to say at the end of his time. Professor Chris Busby is with me, a former government advisor on radiation, the scientific secretary at the European Committee on Radiation Risk. Uh, good to have you with us, Chris. Thank you very much for coming in. Uh, and we have Professor Ian Fells from the University of Newcastle upon Tyne, who is a former advisor to the World Energy Council. Professor Fells, good evening to you. Hello. Well, uh, first of all, uh, this is the most severe earthquake that uh, they have ever had. The nuclear power stations in Japan have always been designed to cope with earthquakes, uh, but uh, coping with an earthquake of uh, this ferocity uh, is perhaps something that they hadn't anticipated. It would appear, though, that the actual primary containment of the, of the core of the reactors has not been breached, uh, and these explosions, which had superheated steam come hydrogen explosions, are uh, the outside part, the non-nuclear part of the uh, of the power station, and they're, they're extremely worrying all the time. But they seem to have it. They seem to have it under control at the moment. This is very, very similar to the Chernobyl accident. Exactly the same scenario. We have boiling water reactors. Um, in which there's been an explosion, and then there's been a continuous. Uh, uh, release of information saying every time nothing much is happening, there's not very much radiation, um, nobody's going to be harmed, the levels are below this and below that and so on. It's all the same things that happened after the Chernobyl accident and the, and the, the real uh, 
the real situation with the Chernobyl accident only came out after several days, after several days, and I suspect this is what we're going to have to wait for here. But, it, but, but, but what has happened here is exactly the same thing, that the cooling water situation, there'd be no cooling for the, for, the, for the fuel rods, the fuel elements then will melt. If they melt and they fall down into the bottom of the reactor, there can actually be a nuclear explosion. What, what they are saying at the moment is, is it's a zirconium hydrogen explosion. It's inconceivable to me that they haven't flown a helicopter over the top of the reactor so we can look down and see whether what they're saying is actually true. So I, I, I have very big suspicions about this and incidentally an awful lot of radioactivity is coming out. We, we have been using a very advanced sophisticated computer airflow model to model the direction of the wind and luckily it is blowing more or less out to sea northwards along the coast. But there's a piece of the coast that moves out with another reactor there and this reactor suddenly registered a high level of radiation sometime after the number one reactor blew and this was due to, to radiation coming from the number one reactor and blowing north along this track, which means that, that up to 100 kilometers away from this reactor we're getting um, concentrations of plutonium and cesium and iodine and all of these substances which emerged after the Chernobyl accident and caused significant harm to the population, I have to say. A very remote uh, possibility. Incidentally, that this explosion, the, these reactors aren't anything like the Chernobyl ones, which are RBMK reactors, uh, and that was a gigantic hydrogen explosion, it's true, which blew um, material two kilometers into the upper atmosphere. But let's look at what the radiation uh, release might be, and uh, it would be mostly radioactive iodine. Um, now, radioactive iodine has a half life, I think, of about eight days. In other words, after two or three weeks, it's faded away. It, so, I mean, if that, and that's anything, that's a, that's a bit of comfort. I mean, you're not going to worry about radiation releases very much, especially if they're, if they're pretty mild. You're going to worry about just not having electricity. This is a radiological catastrophe already. It could get a great deal worse. And people will suffer as a result of the radiation and the radioactive radionuclides that are, being, that are being put out from this plant. And incidentally, one of them is plutonium. In the plutonium reactor, we're going to get plutonium coming out of that already. And plutonium cannot be detected by Geiger counters. It's an alpha emitter. So the readings that they are giving uh, in, in order to reassure everybody, high as they are, do not detect the particles of uranium and, and plutonium which are, being, which are being released from this reactor all the time, never mind whether it's exploded or open or whatever. Professor Wells really is sticking to the accepted nuclear industry line. They are not dangerous, don't worry about radiation, you should be more concerned about not having electricity, frankly that's a load of bollocks. But already in the early stages, you could see the differing lines emerging. Professor Busby telling the cold hard facts and the industry saying everything is okay. Everything okay, really. Sounds a bit like the China syndrome to me. The China syndrome. It's about people. People who lie. And people faced with the agony of telling the truth. Right. People like Kimberly Wells, a television reporter paid to smile, not to think. A few words about a veterinarian who makes house calls on sick fish. Or is it aquarium calls? Richard Adams, a cameraman who never learned how to play by the rules. Wait till you get that other room, get that radiation all over that cute little body. Jack Goodell, an engineer who knows too much to tell the truth. In anything, that man ever does, there's some element of risk, right? Well, that's why we have what we call defense in depth. And cares too much to lie. No accident. It will start with a tremor in a nuclear power plant. Where it will end will depend on three people. I would say you're probably lucky to be alive. The same for the rest of Southern California. Jane Fonda. Let's face it, you didn't get this job because of your investigative abilities. Kimberly, don't fight it. Jack Lemon. There was a vibration. Michael Douglas. I don't know that accident is the right word. Accident is the right word. The China Syndrome. The harder they try, the more resistance they meet. They've got their own security men. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you want me to make it any clearer? The closer they get, no. the more threatening it becomes. No. The China no. Syndrome. You Today, only a handful of people know what it really means. And they're scared. Soon, you will know.
the China Syndrome. They don't want to acknowledge how bad the situation is. The leadership there is disconnected from reality. They're not physicists. They're not engineers. They think it's just going to go away. They live in a fantasy parallel universe. The Japanese government says it's a number five, like Three Mile Island. That's, that's obviously wrong because just one reactor out of control is Three Mile Island. We have four nuclear power plants raging out of control. It's obviously greater than, than Three Mile Island. I, I just got it's a ask. six. Right. It's a piece of junk. So it's, it's done, it's going it's to be irradiated. It's done, it's gone. There's no way you can salvage that thing. So other than if it spirals out of control, we could lose a good chunk of northern Japan. Well, in a democracy, we have to evaluate what is called the Faustian bargain. Faust was this mythical figure who sold his soul to the devil for unlimited power. The Japanese have thrown the dice. They, they went for the Faustian bargain because they have no oil, they have no coal, they have no natural resources that can generate energy. When Japan was rocked by a massive earthquake and tsunami back in March, we told ourselves the worst was behind us. Tens of thousands dead, an economy shattered, whole communities razed. Surely the Japanese had suffered enough. But all these weeks later, the crisis is far from over. The crippled Fukushima nuclear plant is leaking. And judging from the experience at Chernobyl, recovery won't be measured in years more like centuries. More problems have been reported at the Fukushima nuclear plant two months after it was crippled by Japan's deadly earthquake and tsunami. A water leak from a reactor vessel and another spill of contaminated water into the ocean are the latest setbacks in the worst nuclear crisis since Chernobyl. Operators TEPCO told a news conference about the difficulties at reactor number one, which had been seen as the closest to stabilizing. There's likely to be a large leak in the pressure vessel, possibly as a result of fallen fuel pellets, he explains. As for a meltdown, it's certain that it has crumbled and the fuel is located at the bottom. The battle to bring Fukushima under control has been complicated by repeated leaks of radioactive water. Nearby, the Pacific Ocean and groundwater have both been threatened. A couple of months after the event, the cover-up is becoming obvious. The Japanese government and TEPCO saying they may gain control still. Whilst obvious to many that it is a disaster. It is human nature to try and cover your mistakes. But with a nuclear plant that is releasing radiation into the environment, affecting the world it is unbelievable to think they would still be in denial. As the disaster now escalates, let's go back to Professor Chris Busby. This was a, a Chernobyl-level disaster because it was quite clear to me at that time, having looked at the explosions, that there were ma major problems with those reactor pressure vessels, and it now turns out that there are, and that at least one of them is cracked and there's fuel all over the place. Hey, this is a much worse accident than Chernobyl, and the reason is that there are a lot of people living nearby. The population of the 100-kilometer zone is about 3 million, and out to 200 kilometers there's another 7 million people. And the, and the contamination out to those distances, according to the IAEA, is about one megabecquerel per square uh, meter. Now, now, that's an awful lot of radiation. That's one million disintegrations per second per square meter of land, which is about twice as high as the Chernobyl exclusion zone. So there are going to be an awful lot of deaths and awful lot of cancers. Professor, can you just clarify for me, the reason that most people, most of the officials said in the first place it wasn't like Chernobyl is because, unlike Chernobyl, there was containment over the uh, reactors here in all of these. Uh, we, we think they're still intact, most of them anyway. And uh, at those reactors. So that's why people were saying it's nowhere near as bad as Chernobyl. There was no huge, large-scale explosion. You're saying this is different. I just want to clarify it. Well, anyone, anyone who looked at those video, the video footage of those explosions wouldn't have said that there was no large-scale explosion. The well, they said that's a hydrogen explosion, not a nuclear explosion. Well, it was a hydrogen explosion in Chernobyl as well, actually, so it was the same thing, although there have been some questions about whether it was a hydrogen explosion then. But the other point that you've missed, or that people missed, is that there were a huge number of spent fuel rods sitting right on top 
of the reactor. So when it exploded and everybody saw it exploding, all of those fuel rods went up in the air. And anyway, as we now know, it has melted down. So I don't think it suddenly melted down yesterday. Is this I a think worst? that that thing was split. I don't think anything could be done. The problem is that under those very high radiation fields, robots don't work. And they certainly found that.